Well, gentlemen, what we have here is a Blue Label X-Force that I have rebuilt. It has come back because the guy has popped some pills in it. Um, if memory serves me, I built this, or rebuilt this, oh, about a year and a half, two years ago. So it's been out there running this entire time. Uh, let's zoom up in here real quick. And it is a 12 pill. The two pill driver section has been completely um, disconnected and muted. It's not even hooked up. If I can find it, I'll go back and I'll put the original rebuild video of this amp um, down in the comments if you guys want to go watch it as well. But as far as I can tell by looking at it, we've got a bad transistor here and another bad transistor here. And we can tell that by looking down here at the 10 ohm smoke indicators. That one's popped, and that one is popped. And now when we go over here and we look at the final combiner ring, we can see that it's got a couple scorched sections. But the upside to this is the customer, the guy that owns this, has got a watt meter. And he does this crazy thing. It's called he uses it. When he saw the power drop off, he quit using the box. He called me up and says, hey, will you take a look at it? And I said, yeah. So this thing's been here for a hot minute, but it's okay. We're going to zip through this real quick, and we're going to get it out of here. The reason I got to do this one is because he's got two others that are here that are down for whatever reason. We're going to look at them here in a little bit, too. Um, and I want to send all three out in one package and just be done with it if that makes any sense. So, today, um, we're going to pop the lid off this thing. I'm going to disconnect the wire that goes to the fan. Now, when this came in, it had two fans here, and that vent was blocked, and it, it was a mess. This, we ended up knocking out the holes in the back to get more air pressure, more airflow through the amp. Um, this case design is horrible. That's why I don't build with this style of amp case. There's not enough place. There's too much, there's too much air restriction between the air has got to crawl up and go over a bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of resistance to the air movement in the cabinet. And then in the bottom side of this thing, it's a just horrible design. Um, the slot that's in the back was too small, which on this one we had to open up. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the one that I got where the heat sink for all 12 of the transistors was only this wide. And we replaced it with a full size heat sink. So the airflow has to wrap around a bunch of shit here in the front of the cabinet to exhaust its way through the heat sink. And then on top of that, the way they've got the heat sink set is the heat sink stops back here on the cabinet. And so the whole back quarter of this thing was wide open. And what we did is we took this all apart and we put a block in the back of this. So all the air has to go through this highly restrictive point and flow out the bag. There's a lot of these boxes out there running with this case design. And they work. And they've been working for a while. The cabinet design is shit. There's no doubt about it. But if you don't push them too hard, these things last for a long time. Um, this is in part of the interim crossover phase between the gray label and what I mean by gray label is when Carl and Carol owned it to the blue label, which when Arlen bought the business. This is an Arlen built box. If I'm not mistaken, this is sold to this guy and the reason it popped in the first place was because of bad heat sink, not enough of it. Like towards the end it seemed like they were just cramming any bit of aluminum they could underneath it to call it called it a heat sink even though it wasn't big enough um, and he was using it on sideband it had the SSB switch up here in the front but it didn't have any bias so we went in and we added bias on this thing as you guys can clearly see all of the circuitry we added and uh, well <clears throat> Today it's back just to get a couple transistors replaced. So this probably won't take too awful long to get done. But uh, let's pop the lid off. 
Let's pull out four transistors and let's get to testing here. Okay, so our four transistors are out that are the possibly affected ones. They have been taken out in the order to which they were put in. So our main culprit is this one here on the end. This is another one that's in question. So let's test these up real quick, see what we got to work with. Again, a 26, still a perfectly good transistor. It's probably gonna find its way back into the amplifier. This is its partner that has got the slightly discolored 10 ohm resistor. Let's see what we got going on here. The other reason that this amp failed is it was a full of PP100. Yeah, this one's shorted as well. Done. So, okay. This amp was full of PP100s. And this one is. Six. Oddly enough, those two match with each other for the most part. Let's go ahead and we'll grab up this transistor, which we know is popped. But we don't know until we test and verify. Junk. Okay. So we'll partner these two together. This one had a gain of 26. I don't remember what the first one was. Let's just retest it. It's in the 20 somethings. Twenty-six, twenty-six. All right. Twenty-seven. Close enough. All right. So we'll clean these up, straighten out the legs on these transistors. We'll reinstall them. Then we'll get two brand new HDs and we'll put them together so they're matched together. Everything is matched. And this guy should be able to go on and keep enjoying life. Pretty straightforward. All right, moving on. Okay, well, right now that's set in 2x. It's a 1,000 watt slug. Now it's set in 1x. 1,000 watt slug in 1x. 1,000 watt slug in average. 5 watt slug in reverse back from the bird. 10,000 watt dummy load. Let's come over here, shut the amp off. We're going to use the D-Rail Bench Striker 955 today. Oh, we're going to hit this with a whopping 110, 120 watts. So, before I turn that on, let's turn our 5 watt slug around. We're going to put a 5 watt carrier in it. Back that down to two and a half watts. Turn that back around. Get up. Easily over a kilowatt. 600-ish bird. Okay, so it means we'll see about 1800 peak. So, 1900 peak. One, two. Everything inside the amp. Inside the amp is singing the same song. As in all the transistors are lighting up. One, two. And nothing on that output ring is getting too overly hot. Oh, one, two, one, two. Input tune doesn't look too bad. It seem better, but doesn't look too bad. Um, let's check our power supply voltage. See what it's sagging to, if it is. I think this one is fixed, to be honest with you. Grab our case ground. Here, so we're floating at 16. Hello. 15.3, no problem. Okay. 
Well, let's grab our 490, which will put about 200 in this thing. Increase our drive a little bit. Turn the amp off. Hello, one, two. Right at about 200 watts drive. Hello, 2000 plus. Get down to the five watt scale. Hello, 2300 watts. So, it's acting linear, everything's happy. Hello. 23 so it is happy as happy could be it's back up to running full chooch i don't want to run it that hard yet like i'm gonna step away from this while i'm still ahead of the game let's see here let's switch back over to the 2950 Yep, 2950 back in play. Turn power supplies on. Preamp is working. 2950 makes about 25 watts. So let's go over here. Hello, 20, 25 watts of drive on one X. Hello, over a thousand with 20 watts of drive. So put that on two X. Hello, 1200 peak. The Sam's working fine. Okay, well, call this a win. Just throw the lid on it so we can get some airflow through it and get this all buttoned up and let's move on to his other Texas stars. So according to the customer, this one's been here before. Um, this one just quit on him. He's not too sure what happened. And this one's got a really high SWR input where the radio was freaking out and the amp started to oscillate. So. We'll set that big guy aside for a minute. Let's see what's going on here. So we're gonna use the 2950. Now this thing's got power to it. The fan is not coming on. And, well, it's transmitting. Oh, wow. Hello, and make a power. Preamp is working. Just no front light and the fan's not running. Is there a switch for the fan I'm missing? Yeah, I'm right here in the front. Okay, fan's running. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. Hello. Put SWR is a little bit funky, but. Okay. We'll dig into that here in a minute. Now let's go look at the killer bee. Push button light works on it. It's a good sign. No pop pills is all I care about. The rest of it I can figure out. Okay, preamp's dead. 
Hello. It's not oscillating. Hello. Oh yeah, input tune is bejorked. Hello. And here, check this out. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the preamp's not working. Well, I now got my marching orders. We'll start with this one. Well, I've definitely had harder things to fix. All right, so preamp, let's we'll start there. A bad transistor. All it was. Now the oscillation issue in the high input SWR, I went in here and I started looking at it and I'm like, we are flat out missing some parts. On the input transformer, there's 1200 puff worth of capacitance. On the output, there's 1200 puff worth of capacitance. 1200 puff, 1200 puff. So I went and added 1200 puff worth of capacitance. Now I went to CB Tricks and I checked the schematics to make sure that there wasn't a huge difference between the 250 and the Killer B 250. Killer B just means it's got a variable on it. So anyhow, um, let's see, we are on 1415 volts at the moment. We're using the bench radio. So let me show you drive. And oh, one, two, one, two, one, two. Turn the amp on. At oh, one, two, one, two. At oh, one, two. Now let's go look at our input. At oh, one, two. At oh, one, two. At oh, one, two. At oh, one, two. Having all the parts on the board usually helps. So that was an easy fix. At oh, meters working, lights are working. This thing's running. It's not oscillating, nor can it oscillate. I don't know why somebody would take that cap out of there. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. At all. One, two. At all. One, two. Run on sideband. Hello, one two one two. Hello, one two one two one two. Hello, one two one two audio one two one two. Fixed. All right, let's go play with this one over here. I don't know if you remember back when we did the initial test of this just a couple seconds ago. To you, to me, it was a little bit ago when I keyed it up and the transmit light didn't come on, I was like, problems in the relay. How that circuit works is it takes 12 volts directly from here and it dumps it out on the board over here. It dump, dumps it out on the board here and then it goes through this choke and through, or goes through the choke, comes out the choke here, goes through the choke, then goes through this resistor and then it goes over here and does our bias. Well, the light bulb is run off of the 12 volt DC before it goes through that resistor. So, hello, one, two. Hello, Mr. George. Hello, Mr. George. Yeah, so we're getting 14.12 on the inside of the box. So let's come over here, let's measure this at the source. Hello. One two, right? Look at this. At all one two. A voltage ain't dropping. This is why I tell you big power wire is a necessity. And everybody goes, no, 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 I'm an expert. I don't know. Look, we got big power wire coming to this Anderson clip. Way oversized Anderson clip going into the amplifier. At all one two one two. No voltage drop there. But when we come and we probe over here, so the 12 volt goes through here, through here, through a choke, through
through another choke and then over to this resistor. Good old Mr. George. Good old Mr. George. What did you pay for these men? Good old. I think you pay too much. Good old 1212. Getting a full volt and a half drop internally on the box. So if we didn't have the oversized power wire, I'd be dropping like two full volts. Hello, Mr. George. Preamp is working. And remember when this came in, these lights didn't work. And what I ended up having to do was pull them out, tweak the legs on the lights because they're LEDs. They're not as good as the old incandescents, but if you take and you fold the legs over very carefully and then pinch them just right, you put them back in there and they make contact forever. So what it ended up being was a problem with the relay, specifically this tab on the relay. No, focus, focus, there we go. This outer tab, that silver one, somehow got bent and the contacts weren't latching up. So all I had to do was pull the relay open, massage that contact back a little bit, and then now we've got sideband hookup. What I mean by that is now the bias circuit's energized. Oh, one, two. Everything's working just the way it should. Okay, so this is a 1,000 watt slug and peak. I'll show you what we're putting into it for drive. It's still the same radio, so we're not gonna see any different. At 01212 are 25, 28 watts. At 0112, about 350. Preamp is working. At 0112, it's medium. At 010. That is low. So let's come up here, let's take a look at our input SWR. Once again, 5 watt slug in reverse. At 012. Looks amazingly like the other Killer B, doesn't it? Ah, imagine that. So, at the end of the day, 10 pill fixed. This guy's fixed. The Killer B's fixed. Everything's running just the way it should. I don't know why anybody would try and take that cap out of that other Killer B. I would. It doesn't make any sense, man. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, needless to say, all three of these are pretty much done. Um, I'm going to put the tin back on this one, but I think you all have seen me do that before. Tested, done, ready to go back home. So on that note, I want to say, gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and watching my little dog and pony show over here. I really do appreciate it. If there's anything I can ever do to help you, or you got a question that you need an answer to, don't hesitate to give me a call Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, Mountain Standard Time. The other thing is, please take a minute and come join my Patreon channel. It helps a bunch. YouTube isn't paying anything anymore. Not that they were ever paying me that great in the first place. But just follow the link below. I'll make sure to put it down in the description in the doobly-doo if you're interested in coming and joining. There's quite a few of us over there. I put stuff up in there every day. Um, usually six days a week. Of course, you get access to everything I got for sale and everything that comes through here 48 hours before it hits the regular YouTube channel. But there's quite a bit of exclusive content, a bunch of exclusive videos, pictures and photographs, everything I do every day. Well, come check it out. Big shout out to Siglent, Mechman, XS, Coaxial Dynamics, Bird. And one more is coming before the end of the month, a major one. Thank you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Hope you have a great week. Click, click.